Hello everyone, this is Soviet Russian Bear back with a new video. So at the Valdai Forum, Putin sent a signal to the world community, but for some reason the Russian one was aroused. Once again, referring to the topic of Ukraine, Vladimir Putin said that Russia is concerned about the relationship between Ukraine and NATO. At the same time, he stressed that Moscow does not expect Ukraine's formal admission to the alliance, but it is concerned about the prospect of military deployment on the territory of Ukraine, mentioning the notorious missiles near Kharkov. These missiles are like Russian troops in Donbass. Everyone refers to them, everyone is afraid of them, but nobody has ever seen them and won't see. And the Russian president knows this very well. Putin is also aware that the military deployment on the territory of Ukraine has been going on since the time of Leonid Kuchma. Uh, Leonid Kuchma is the second president of Ukraine. At the same time, the Ukrainian authorities began to offer their partners to place military bases on the territory of Ukraine, even without the country's admission to NATO. The training centers mentioned by Putin under the name of which you can hide anything. While Soviet military specialists were in Cuba and simple training centers were being opened, the Americans did not worry. And as soon as the Soviet missiles were delivered, the Caribbean crisis broke out, during which the world in its entire history came closest to the brink of a full-scale nuclear World War III. Now, the means of monitoring the territory and the actions of potential opponents are several orders of magnitude more effective than they were during the Caribbean crisis. And it takes more than a year to build a nuclear missile base. And the relevant decisions must be made by the legislative bodies of the two countries. You cannot hide something like that. Everyone will know everything about it in advance. Polish leadership still dreams of a NATO missile base on Polish territory. Poland even agreed with the US that they would build it at, at their own expense. And where is this base? And Poland is an important member of NATO. A logical question arises. Why is Putin saying it all now? Why was Russia not concerned when during the war in Donbass Ukrainian shells fell on the Russian territory? Foreign mercenaries fought en masse in the ranks of the armed forces of Ukraine. And foreign instructors who arrived in Ukraine in hundreds trained the Ukrainian army. Why did the provocative shelling of the Crimean territory by the Ukrainian APC covering the withdrawal of the terrorist group when the FSB officer died, did not cause such a sharp reaction. And now, when Kiev quote-unquote only kidnapped a Luhansk officer with Russian citizenship, the reaction is more violent than when the Ukrainian special services killed and kidnapped commanders, military and civil servants of the DPR-LPR. Moreover, there have been cases of abduction of the Russian military and civil servants from Crimea. One could of course assume that Russia is fed up with it, but in international relations it does not work that way. It happens there when the balance of power changes and is called upon to formally fix the change in this balance. The fact that the actualization of the Ukrainian issue is not an accidental outburst of emotions is evidenced firstly by a systematic approach. The topic of Ukraine suddenly began to be constantly aroused by the Russian leadership at the highest level, just at the moment when the West so clearly lost interest in that country that the Ukrainian politicians, both from the regime and the opposition, perceiving the loss of interest as a national tragedy, have begun to talk about it in full voice. Secondly, this, uh, this is evidenced by the complexity of the accusations against Ukraine. For example, Putin said that in the current conditions, the Ukrainian people cannot choose the government that suits them, this is evidenced by the low ratings of absolutely all political forces. That is, the Ukrainian people do not believe any of the current politicians. 
but formally, and Putin is a well-known formalist and as a rule refers not so much to the spirit as to the letters of the law. Zelensky was elected by the absolute majority of voters who came to the elections, while the turnout was quite high, hardly different from that in other presidential elections. Moreover, most likely, we cannot know for sure because strict records are not kept, the majority of voters who were in Ukraine at that time voted for Zelensky. Millions were working abroad at that time. The most of those who voted now to do not like Zelensky, but this but his term of office has not ended and his ratings is higher than that of Yanukovych on the eve of the Maidan. During the Maidan, Yanukovych's rating, which many saw as the last obstacle to Nazism, more than doubled, but by September 2013 it had dropped to 15%. And the Zelensky election itself has caused the least criticism and suspicion since Kuchma's second election in 1999. So two things have changed in the rhetoric of the Russian authorities on the Ukrainian issue. Earlier, while formulating Russia's attitude to Ukraine, Putin relied on formal size and now he began to talk about the actual state of affairs. Russia has ceased to recognize the existence of Western interests in Ukraine and the right of the Ukrainian authorities to make an independent foreign policy choice. If we recall a similar situation with Belarus, where during the critical days of August 2020 for the Lukashenko government, Putin declared his readiness to support the Belarusian authorities by force, not only against external aggression, but also against internal rebels. It was officially announced that the reserve of the Russian National Guard, uh, Rosgvardia, was being prepared to help Belarus. Then we will see that for the first time since 1990, Russia declared not just that it had its sphere of interest, but that it was ready to transform the sphere of interest into a sphere of influence and defend its position in it even at the cost of military confrontation with NATO. Both in case of Belarus and the case of Ukraine, it was made that clear that it, if the red line is crossed, Russia will not care whether the armed forces of Western countries are on the territory of the respective country and whether they will be involved against the armed forces of the Russian Federation if the latter crosses the border. A provocation by Kiev was called a condition that opens the conflict in Belarus an attempt to overthrow Lukashenko by force, which the Belarusian security forces will not be able to stop on their own. Putin's statement about Zelensky also indicate that Russia is denying legitimacy to those authorities in the sphere of its state interest that do not want to build relationships on the principles proposed by Russia. Putin's statement is a softer version of the globalist tricks regarding Gaddafi and Assad, who at one fine moment, according to them, delegitimized themselves because they stopped reflecting the interests of the peoples that, as the globalists in, understood these interests. Russia managed to save Assad, but for Gaddafi it all ended very badly. <coughs> Now, from Moscow's point of view, Zelensky has delegitimized himself because he does not reflect the interests of the Ukrainian people as Russia understands them. Nothing personal. The political boomerang has returned. 20 and even 10 years ago, not only in the West, but also in Eastern Europe and in the, even in the CIS countries and even in Russia itself, many people thought that Russia would never return. It returned today. It's funny, but if it weren't for the mass confidence that Russia is gone forever and you can spit on it with impunity, this return would be much softer. Five and ten years ago, Putin offered everyone, uh, the United States, Europe and Ukraine, much softer condition than those on which Russia has now announced its return. It remains to add that a bid to create one sphere of influence is not only evidence 
of an increased level of capabilities, but also much greater responsibility. Moving in this direction requires increased caution. We often recall that our sphere of influence sucked the juices from the USSR and the republics from Russia, but in the same way, the need to control the sphere of influence and the maintenance of privileged NATO allies sucked the juices from a much less sentimental US empire, not at all inclined to charity. I would like the return of Russia to be not only and even not so much quicker as well as considered and accurate. Anyway, this has been Soviet Russian Bear. I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace, love and prosperity to all of you, my wonderful, uh, beautiful subscribers. If you like this video, please click that like button. If you want more videos like this, please click the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you never miss a new video. This has been Soviet Russian Bear and bye-bye, до свидания.